an easy watercolour flower painting for beginners, that's what we're doing in today's video. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour and a little bit of mixed media too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the little bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content on Saturdays for my Patreon subscribers. So often on this channel I teach more in-depth techniques and botanical techniques, but today we're going to do something much simpler, much more fun and a little bit more craft based. So I'm going to teach you how to make a really, really simple painting. If you're a complete beginner, this is going to be a great place to start. If you are more experienced, then this is a design that you can use perhaps for making greetings cards or for making a little gift for a friend. So for the last few weeks I've been working on something really exciting now in collaboration with a little British company called Jackman's Art Materials who make handmade watercolours I have been designing paint colours and I have designed a floral set and I'll be using them in this video and telling you about the paints. Don't panic though if you don't have those colours I'll be giving you alternative colours that you can use all the way through the video. Now you might notice as well we've got slightly different light levels today in the studio. You can probably hear bird song as well, not just pigeons but all sorts of birds. That's because it's very, very early here. We're in the middle of a heat wave in the UK. You know, we're British, we really can't cope with the hot weather. It's going to get incredibly hot today, maybe 37 degrees. It will be maybe 5-6 degrees hotter than that in my studio later on. And in order to film I have to have all the doors and windows shut for the noise levels and also lots of lights on. So we're filming very early in the day today. So let's get on with our watercolour painting. So first up we're just going to do the very tiniest amount of drawing. So I've got a piece of card here cut in the shape of a heart and um, you can find templates like this on the internet if you need a shape or um, you can even use something like a cookie cutter. You could also use a circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint the flowers around the outside and we're going to leave a white gap in the middle and this is somewhere that you could place somebody's name or something like a date for a wedding, something like that. So let's draw that in the center there. And um, I'm just gonna draw really lightly. So we're going to reserve it not, not too crisply. There's gonna be the flowers, um, the petals are going to come over the edge of it just a little bit in places. But I just want to get an idea of where it is so that I don't paint over it by mistake. So let's pop that in like that. And the only other flowers that I'm going to draw in advance are a few white flowers. And uh, I fancy having some sort of flowers that have got kind of squarish ends to the petals like that. And as I said, we're not going necessarily for a realistic look today. So you can draw these anyhow that you like. Five is a good number for petals, isn't it? Let's do five petals. So I'm going to do two or three of these. And you can put these anywhere randomly around you can make them big or small. You could do this painting on a much bigger scale or equally you could do it very very tiny and um, then it would be useful for a greetings card. So I'm working on stretched paper today which is something I always do because I don't want the, we're going to put a lot of water on in a minute, we don't want the paper to crinkle. If you don't know how to stretch paper I will link to a video above that, um, that will tell you how to do it. Now I even use stretch paper when I'm uh, when I'm working for greetings cards because what I do is I get a big sheet of stretch paper and I divide it into little squares and make my greetings cards and then I cut them out and I know then that those little squares are completely flat and ready to pop onto my greetings cards so let's put a few of these white flowers in. I'm not going to have too many because um, otherwise I'll have no room for all the other nice colours. So I've done three there but you know it doesn't matter how many you do we're just going for that nice floral effects and I think a little bit of white is always lovely and it'll help to play off against the whites that we're leaving in the centre here. Now the first colour we're going to use today is one I've called Delphinium so I wanted to make a colour that was somewhere between blue and purple so that I could paint all the lovely blue flowers in the garden. If you don't own this colour you can use any ready-made purple or even something like French ultramarine which will be a little bit bluer but still very lovely. So you'll see me working from these little sample pots today and that's because the colours have literally just been formulated. They are available in tubes and pans and they may at some point be available in pots like this as well. 
Um, you're going to need a flat brush today and you're also going to need a ordinary watercolor painting brush like this one. Now you'll see this says um, gold sable on. It's not sable, um, I don't use animal hair brushes. This is actually a synthetic brush and is available with the set or um, you can buy the set with brush or without brush if you would like to. I'm also gonna have some of my own um, branded brush sets coming up um, very shortly actually. So what we're going to do here is we're going to work onto wet paper. So I'm going to be dropping this color onto paper that I've pre-wet. And this is the only color I'm going to do this for because I want this color to bleed out. And although we're not going for specific flowers today, I'm thinking of things like cornflowers. And I'm going to wet the paper all the way across and then drop my delphinium color in. I've also got some, um, some kitchen paper, some paper towel here as well. So let's take the water across here and we're going to take it across the whole picture even though we're not painting on the whole picture yet it just stops um, the paint going off the edge of the water and then us ending up with hard lines where we don't want them it's a very warm day today here as i've said so i'm going to work quite quickly what we're going to rely on here is the fact that watercolor spreads out if you drop it onto a surface that's less wet than it so the idea is that you apply your water like this and let it get semi-dry now in the studio today that's going to take about 10 seconds but if you're somewhere where it's a little bit colder then you may need to just wait a minute or two before doing this next stage and um, you know there's a lot of leeway with this it's going to be quite a loose painting so now I'm going to get my color I'm going to put a little bit actually just in the lid here to mix and I want it to be quite watery so you can see it's this color between blue and purple and what I want to do then is I'm going to drop it in one or two places onto my board and there we are you can see how it's just starting to spread out I'd actually like them to be just a tiny bit bigger there we are you can just put a little more on if you need them to go out a little further and uh, we'll have one down here I'm conscious of not using up too much space on this paper and ending up without room for the other flowers as well now we're going to add something more to those whilst they're uh, whilst they're sitting there like that so what I want to do now is dry my brush. I want to get some darker bits in the middle. Now, if I put the wet paint on, it'll just spread again. So what I'm going to do this time is get paint that's sort of sticky. You can do this with tube paint. You can also do it with pan paint. You just need to use just the minimum of water, shall we say. So I've got sticky paint on my brush now, which means that it won't go anywhere really when I put it in. You'll get some softness to it, but it'll just stay put. So I'm going to dot some of that into the middle to get just an idea of those little sort of fluffy blue flowers. Such a pretty color, so pleased with it. I have designed art materials in the past, but this is the first time I've actually formulated colors. It's been so much fun. So there, I'm really happy with those. So I've got three greens in this set and the first one is called soft green and that's the one we're going to use next. I designed this color because I wanted a color that was suitable for all those really, really pale silver gray leaves that you get in the garden. If you don't have this color, you can take any of your ready-made greens and just water it down, add a little bit more blue, even a little bit of pink if it's too bright and get that very pale, soft gray green. So I'm going to get some little sprigs of leaves in now. I mean, I could do them anywhere really, but I quite fancy having them actually coming out from this centre heart. So what I'm going to do is just randomly draw some little um, lines. Maybe we'll have one here. Everything's in threes at the moment, isn't it? That won't necessarily carry on, but it's working at the moment. So I'm going to pop a few of these light greens in and just put some little leaves along those stems. And I'm also going to paint the stems. So I've got uh, a little dish here and here is my colour. Now this is a granulating colour, so when you're applying granulating colours they will separate slightly and that's the nature of them. So often beginners ask if, um, you know, if something's gone wrong with their picture because they can see their paint separating, but it's not the case at all. It's just that some colours granulate and some colours don't. It all depends on the size of the pigments. So when you get paints that do, you can see them, they start to separate like that. It's a good idea just to give them a little bit of a stir. But you will still see the granulation on the paper and I actually think it looks rather beautiful. So we're gonna get that mixed like that. And then I'm just going to, I think we'll just paint along like this. And then we're just gonna put some very simple little shapes on here. I'll do them a reasonable size because otherwise, you know, if I need to paint around them later on, and they're too small, it may be tricky. So let's get those in like that. And we'll do the same for the other two. 
you'll notice I'm painting outwards. It's always a good idea to paint outwards with uh, with stems because then the brush will naturally, uh, the stroke will naturally get narrower as it goes out, and that's the way that um, you know real plants are. So it's always a good idea to go up from the base and out when painting stems. This one's a little bit bigger, isn't it? Just really taking some shapes here. Just going to get those final leaves a little bit smaller. They would naturally get smaller as they go to the end of the stem. I'll paint the other one and then we'll get on to the next flowers. Next up is a colour called Poppy Red and we're actually going to make some little poppy shapes with it. Now, if you don't have this colour, you can use any scarlet orange based red or you can use something like a cadmium red light. Hello, I'm from the future. I had to stop filming yesterday and open all the windows. It got too hot in here. If you're enjoying this video, could I ask you please just to click like, share, subscribe or leave me a nice comment and that way uh, YouTube will help my channel to grow. I'll be able to make more videos for you and teach more people. I'll be so grateful and um, back to the video. So here's my poppy red. It's a beautiful bright colour. Really important when you go from green to red to clean your brush and to clean your water because you don't want anything left on the brush. Green and red are opposite colours, so your green will dull down your red. So we want our red going onto uh, clean paper with clean water. I'm going to sort of face the flowers going outwards so that they're not all facing upwards. So what I'm going to do here with uh, with the poppies is I'm going to make almost a uh, almost a fan shape with water like this, not too even. And then I'm going to drop the paint straight in and start getting it bleeding upwards. And I'm also going to go in with some paint just onto the dry paper as well there. So we get a bit of variation between soft and hard edges for our poppy. And one final thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clean the brush and I'm going to get some of the colour we used before, the delphinium, just to drop a little bit of dark in the base there. So you can use any colour for this really you can use a dark green or a dark purple and I've dropped that in a little bit wet so it's going to bleed out just slightly if it ever starts to bleed too far you can just lift a bit of the water out with your brush we might add a stem to that later on so I'm going to do now some more of these poppies just in one or two other places in the painting facing outwards so next up is a colour that I've called Petal Shadow. It's one that I'm very proud of and it was I know it was very hard for the manufacturers to, uh, to mix. And I've designed this colour because I see all the time beginners getting into trouble putting shadow on white flowers. You may have done this yourself and sort of killed your flowers. So you want to avoid using earth colours and you want to avoid the, using things like Payne's Grey. There's far too much black pigment in it to make it an effective colour for flower painting. So I have formulated this colour to be towards the lilac end of the grey spectrum. And the reason for that is I want it to be useful not only on flowers and to keep them um, fresh, on white flowers to keep them fresh, but I also want it to be able to be used on yellow flowers without going into the greens. Now, it is sometimes appropriate to put green shadows on yellow flowers, um, especially things like daffodils often have green shadows, but I wanted to give people the option if they didn't want their shadow colour going green when they dropped it onto yellow. Now, if you don't have this colour, um, Davies Grey is a good alternative. It's much less well known than Payne's Grey. It's a very similar colour to this, but it's onto the uh, on the green end of the spectrum, so it's sort of an opaque, milky green grey. If you don't want to use that one, then you can always mix your own grey. So grey is just a mixture of the three primary colours with an emphasis on blue. So like the soft green, this colour also granulates heavily and separates. And it's going to uh, it's going to make it look even more shadowy when you get these little uh, little granular lines in. So it's quite a weak colour, but we're going to use it in a very delicate way. Most of these white flowers will be shown up by us painting the background behind them later on. I just want a little bit of shadow in the centre of them. So it's not a botanical approach where we're looking every single petal. We're just going to drop a little bit of shadow in the centre of these. And I want to go on to wet paint. Obviously I can't take water across the whole picture again because what would happen then everything I'd done previously would smudge. So I'm going to instead work on individual flowers and I'm going to pop the uh, pop the water on the petal. So I'm basically painting each petal in water and you don't want puddles. Um, I'm putting quite a lot on here because it's extremely hot in the studio so it'll dry quickly but if it's a little bit cooler just place it on carefully so that you haven't got great big puddles of water because as soon as you have 
puddles of water, you're not going to be able to control what happens to the paint. So you want the petals wet, but, uh, but evenly spread, shall we say, and not too drippy. Again, I'm going to go in with wet paint, so I'm going to get a bit of water and go in with nice wet paint. You can always go darker with paint, it's quite hard to go lighter sometimes. So there we are, I'm just dropping that into the centre there, and you see how it's just bleeding outwards. I'm also going to put maybe a tiny little dot in the centre here, perhaps with the delphinium colour again, but I could use any dark colour. But I'm going to wait until this first layer of shadow is dry. So I'm going to do that to all the other white flowers now. Next up is a colour that I've called Buttercup. This is just slightly warmer than a lemon yellow, so if you don't have this colour, you can of course use any of your lemons or any of these sort of um, cadmium yellow lights or cadmium yellows, or even a rolean will be suitable for this next part of the painting. So here's my Buttercup yellow. I'm going to make some simple Buttercup type flowers. And I'm also going to drop a little bit of another colour I'll be using later in the video, which is a bright green in the centre, but you can drop any bright green that you have in the centre of these flowers. So I'm just going to get some of the paint and um, I want it to be quite strong and quite wet. Watercolour always wants to flow. Unless you're doing a uh, specifically a dry brush technique, your watercolour should always flow. And so you need plenty of colour on your brush and you need a brush that's big enough as well. See, lots of people using brushes that are too small. So I'm on quite a small painting here. This is 20 by 20 centimetres, so this is a size 8 brush. I often use a size 6, a size 10, a size 12, rarely go smaller than that. I'm actually going to start now to take some of these petals over the edge of the, uh, of the heart itself. And I'm just going to get some really simple, maybe sort of three or four petals on these, like so. And then I'm going to clean my brush and just get some of this green and pop some in the middle there. These lighter flowers will mostly show up when we put darker greens around them later on. So I'm going to get on and do some more of those. Now, I know some of you um, are, like to ask about pigment numbers. You're always very interested in pigments. They will be listed on the Jackman's Art Materials website. Everything will also be listed on my website eventually. I have a few, um, at the time of making this video, I have a few website issues in that at the start of the pandemic, my website was discovered to be um, built on a platform which had become obsolete and the uh, the tech guys gave me no warning about this. So um, I pretty much have an unusable website now that the website is still up and it still works, all the links still work, but I can't get into the back end of it and I can't put any new stuff up. So I'm actually building a new website at the moment, which is going to be very lovely and very snazzy. Um, lots of exciting plans for the website. One thing I'm going to be doing is building up a library of paint swatches from all the paint colours that I own, so hopefully that will be useful for you as well. Now can you see here, I've painted this one almost around and behind these other flowers so that we start to get more of a layered effect. So I'm going to put in a few more of these yellow flowers now. Next I've got for you a colour called Marigold. This is a light clear orange. If you don't have this colour you can use something like a permanent orange, any of your oranges, or if you don't even have an orange in your set, if you've got a very small set of paints, then just get something like a lemon yellow and mix it with one of your scarlet reds. So if you're new to watercolour painting, the rule is of course that you paint um, on a wet surface if you want a soft edge and you paint on a dry surface if you want a hard edge. That could be clean paper but it also could be dry paint. So you see that I'm getting these crisp edges here on these flowers because I'm working on the dry paper now. So I've got my marigold colour which is a nice bright orange and I'm going to put in a few flowers now that are almost sort of have got these little spiky petals that go outwards. So let's just take those out and I'm going to get an idea of there being a centre in these flowers as well. So again, going to clean my brush and dry it slightly. And then I'm going to go back to my poppy colour, my bright red, pop a little bit in the centre there. I need a bit more than that. I think that looks really pretty. So again, I'm going to place some more of these on my paper. Next up is a colour that I've called Clematis. Now, if you've watched any of my colour mixing videos, you'll know that I think that pink is a really, really essential colour, not just for flower painting, but also for colour mixing. Now, if you don't own this colour, you can use something like a permanent rose, you can use a quinacridone pink, or even an opera pink. 
So I don't know if you can see, but I uh, I flicked a few speckles of the uh, of the marigold colour here. I've got a few little mistakes here. I'm going to link to a video up above which will show you how to remove mistakes. But really, when painting flowers and things, half the time it doesn't matter. You can just leave them there. I mean, a lot of people, it's very trendy at the moment in watercolour painting to splatter things on purpose. Of course, you can do that too. So I'm not going to worry about those speckles at the moment. I'll remove them later if I need to. So you can see this colour looks really dark, but actually I'll show you when I put it with some water, it's going to get incredibly bright. So put this here and you see you've got this beautiful, bright, fresh pink. So I'm going to keep it fairly watered down so I get the lightness to it. So I'm going to paint some little flowers that are almost kind of clematis shaped. Let's have one over here actually and let's take it slightly into the heart. As I said, I want the heart to look quite natural. We are going to be going round it in some green later on, so it's going to become more defined, but I think it's just nice if one or two of the flowers just reach over the top of it. So I'm kind of making these shapes that are sort of almost pointed on the end, and then I've got a roundness to them. And what I'm going to do with these flowers is I'm going to do sort of almost the reverse of what we did before. So. I'm going to drop clean water into the middle of them just to give them a bit of variation and to uh, see if we can get a little bit of a uh, background happening in the centre of them. So once they start to get sort of semi-dry, then you go in with a drip of clean water and pop that in the middle. And it takes a while for these effects to take place, but you should start to see some sort of bleeding outwards happening in a few minutes. So I'm going to get on and put more of these pink flowers through my picture. So I've got another colour for you now, which if watered down will make a pink, but it's a much more crimson, more muted pink. So this is a colour that I've called Hollyhock, but it's also great for painting roses. If you don't have this colour, if you've got a beginner's set, the most likely colour that you will have that would be similar to this would be Alizarin Crimson. It's a little bit more muted, but you could use Alizarin Crimson for this part of the project. You could also use something like a permanent Madder Lake. So here's my hollyhock colour and it's a much more muted crimson pink which can go quite dark. I'm actually, before I use it um, in its own right, what I'm going to do is just get some of it quite strong and just put a few little dots in the centre of these white flowers. You could use any colour for this, to be honest, it doesn't matter. Obviously a very pale yellow might not show up, but any of the darker yellows, pinks, purples, even greens, anything you fancy having in the centre there, orange certainly. So I'm going to pop those in. What we're going to do now is make almost a rose shape with this. So I'm going to start off again with a bit of clean water and we'll start, we'll start over in this corner here and I'm just going to start making a sort of a, a, a circular type shape here. And we're going to start going around in these sort of oval circular motions. So it's okay to leave a few hard edges but I don't want too much white in there. So I'm going to go back in with sticky paint now and get a bit more shape to it. So these rose type shapes will look particularly good with some green leaves next to them which we're going to do later on. So I'm going to pop a few more of those shapes in now. So at this stage our painting needs a bit more greenery in it I think and we're going to use a colour that I have named fresh green. So I wanted a green that was really bright and really fresh and really vibrant without being unnatural like some of the emerald greens are that you get in beginner's sets. So if you don't have this colour, you can use any bright fresh green. If you find that your green's a little bit too, uh, too on the fresh side and a little bit too bright, you can always uh, adjust the levels of yellow in it or even add a little bit of pink. So it's looking really pretty but it all needs bringing together. So at this stage you need to let it dry completely before you go into the background a bit more. Now I'm trying to make a YouTube video um, before it gets to 40 degrees in the studio and I expire live on camera. You have no such excuses, you can just leave your painting for half an hour and go and have a cup of tea. Always, if you're British, default to a cup of tea. So I've fetched myself another paintbrush here because what I want to do is have one paintbrush in the green and one in clean water. I've also got two water jars, one for dipping the green in and one for clean water because otherwise you're just constantly getting up and down and changing water. I've also cleaned all my water jars again and got rid of any pink and red that's laying around because we're going to go in with green. We want it to stay fresh and clean. So I've got this colour now which is fresh green. You can see it's a beautiful bright green, very much the colour of grass, 
and um, I'm going to go in what I want to do is go in around the edges of the heart so that the heart starts to show a little bit more and I also need to go around these white flowers so they show as well but in areas I'm going to fade this green out to clean water and the reason is I don't for instance want to go right up to the edge of these beautiful um, these beautiful delphinium color flowers here because I would lose all of those beautiful feathering bits around the edge so I've got two choices I can either fade out with clean water when I get close to them or I can go around in a sort of a jagged motion so that I reserve the uh, the look of them so we'll judge as we come to them I'm going to start in close and work out you don't have to place green all over the uh, the background of the picture if you're a complete beginner don't take your green across your pink anywhere it's better to leave white spaces to be honest because green will really really dull your colors down which is why we painted our flowers onto a white background now if this was acrylic or oil painting we could paint a green background and happily put our pink flowers on top but watercolor is not that simple you need the uh, you need the lightness of the paper the colors to glow and you need also not to go too dark with things like pink otherwise you just find that they do start to look a bit dull so I'm going to go in now and start painting with my green let's go in an area which I think is fairly dry let's try it over here so I'm going to go around the edge here and I'm going to be a bit more careful here about painting along the edge of the heart so that I get a bit of sharpness to it obviously the flowers have gone over in places but we want to reserve that sharpness at least in places so that we get a really nice looking heart shape and can you see that by going around these white flowers as well we'll start to get a little bit of shape there so I'm getting a little bit of bleeding into my pink here which suggests that the pink flower is not dry although the yellow one appears to be better so I'm going to start working actually over here where we've got more dry paint as I said if you've got the luxury of time at home do wait a lot longer than I am in between so that things can dry more effectively. So going around here, as I said, you know, you could take the colour right out to the edge if you want to, but equally we can um, we can fade out with clean water. If I put clean water on that edge and just spread it out, you know, I'll find that the green pigment will almost go on forever. So instead what I'm going to do is get my other brush with clean water and come in from the outside. I am working in extreme temperature conditions here so I have to be quite quick with this part and if you're doing these fading out techniques you know don't don't go very far across your paper before you start to do them especially if the weather is warm where you are Let's just take a bit of that around that orange flower there and again if I don't want a hard edge here I'll come in with a bit of clean water try to keep your water levels fairly even otherwise you will get back runs um, and drying lines but to be honest, it doesn't actually matter very much in this sort of subject. It'll just add to it, to be honest. So I'm going to go in now and place more of these fresh greens around. I'll do a little bit more of it on camera so you can see how it's done. So let's, for instance, let's go over here and go around this white flower. So you can see how the flower didn't show up much. And now it's starting to show. I don't want to go too close to this little spiky flower here. So again, I'm just going to go around there. And then perhaps we'll take some clean water around. I'm going to put a bit of clean water here and come across. I am actually working with my board on a slope. So when you're doing this, you want to be really working on a flat area. It does not help to have your, um, your watercolours tipped. I, I've sometimes very much upset beginners when they've come into class and, and show me these beautiful easels that they've bought. But really, easels are not your friend when you're a watercolour painter. And I say that as someone who um, is perfectly capable of working on an easel. In fact, for art club demonstrations, I often have to work on an easel so that people can see. They either have to point a camera at my paper um, and project it onto a screen if I'm demonstrating. But if that's not possible, then I have to work upright on an easel and let me tell you, it's, it's a fight all the way. And I can do it with a simple landscape perhaps, but um, it's really not easy. And don't put yourself through that unless you are um, demonstrating to art clubs like me and you need to do that for a living. If not, I suggest that you um, don't use an easel. Some people find it easier to draw with an easel, but you can always have one of those easels which is upright and then tips flat for you to continue working on. I just work on a very high table and I sit on a stall and sometimes I stand up as well. Of course, working flat like this can give you a bit of backaches. You just need to take regular breaks and, uh, and do some stretching, really. 
So I'm going to get on and drop more of these fresh greens onto my painting. Now I think we need to add some dark greens to our painting and I've got a colour that I've made called Darkest Green. So this green is designed to go dark but without being too harsh and it's also designed to be watered down to give some more of those sort of blue base greens. Now if you don't have this colour you could use something like a Viridian. Be careful that it's a true Viridian. A lot of things they label in beginner's sets as Viridian are actually phthalo green which is much much brighter and can be a bit harsh and unnatural. If you don't have any ready mixed greens then you can just get something like a cobalt or a Prussian blue and pop a little bit of lemon yellow in. So it's uh, currently 30 degrees in the studio and yes I am eating porridge but I really like porridge. So the last thing to do on this is to put our very, very darkest greens in. So you can see I've um, I've gone in, I've pretty much gone everywhere that I need something to show up. So around most of the yellow flowers and around the edge of all the white flowers. And I've gone very carefully around the edge of the heart. And then I've faded out into clean water areas where I don't want it to be too hard. And I've softened everything as I've got to the edge. So I'm actually really happy with it. It's looking quite good. I have got some bleeding into flowers. As I said, um, I am running against the clock this morning with the heat in here. You yourself will be able to wait much longer in between um, areas and you should wait much longer so that you can allow things to dry and paint next to them without any bleeding. But nevertheless, I think it still looks really pretty. So I've got my darkest green colour here. And what I want to do now is just put some final finishing touches on. I'm going to mix a bit of water with this. Now when this is finished you can write anything you want in the heart shape or in the circle shape that you've left in the middle. My handwriting is actually really appalling. Um, when I was at school there was, uh, there was this kind of trend for teaching children. They thought it was very modern to teach children to write without cursive. So um, when we learned to write for instance a letter O it was literally a circle. It didn't have any kind of start or end or tail. And so um, I'm completely incapable of joining my letters up now. I might join something like an E to an I for example but I still print everything because I was just taught to write without, uh, without tails on my letters. So um, I think that experiment was one for the history bin shall we say. So I've got this dark colour here and what I'm going to do now is just get a few little um, stems and leaves and things. I can also use it if I want to to sort of add drama to things. Now I've got these um, I've got these poppies so I could sort of go in here a little bit wet and, uh, and get something there. I could also get some sort of um, poppies have these really kind of spiky leaves so I could get some of those going on as well. Something like that. The roses particularly I think would look nice with uh, with a little leaf next to them. You know, you could even do them if you wanted to as a, um, you know, as a design like that. I quite like that, actually. Let's keep that. Let's keep that. Or you could fill them in if you think that looks nicer. We aren't going for realism here. We are going for that sort of craft look. So um, I'm quite happy to have those uh, as little outlines. I think that looks quite nice. And let's have another leaf coming out from our poppy here. And you can just really go in as much as you like now, putting in leaves and stems. Now back to the uh, back to the writing in the centre. As I said, I I've got terrible handwriting. So what I like to do is I go on the internet and um, I'll just you know I'll use a program like Word or Photoshop and use a nice font and then I'll print it out and trace it down and then I can go over the top with a pen or even with a paintbrush. So you know don't get a lovely painting and then risk messing it up because you're not very good at writing like me. Now you can put anything you want in the middle there. You could have actually, you know, painted it like a light pink beforehand if you wanted to make it um, something like a, you know, a Valentine's card. You could certainly have done it in a very pale pink or even if you're a little bit more experienced at painting, faded the pink out towards the edges and uh, left it white in the middle. That would be beautiful too. So you can do any of that. Um, you can write anything you want in there. You know, a baby's birth date perhaps would make a lovely gift, wouldn't it, uh, for a new baby. Um, Valentine's, Mother's Day or um, you know you could even write something like I love Adam Driver which would probably be uh, be my preference. Um, never have forgiven them for killing Ben Solo. I'm just going to carry on now and, uh, and make as much of the dark greens as I want without losing the uh, the lovely lightness to this. So I'm going to go in and um, you know I could even uh, even do some some little leaves perhaps here. Let's have something going on here. And anywhere that you go dark next to something light, you will add a, you know, a huge sense of drama. So, you know, I can put a leaf in here, perhaps something like that, and just work my way around the painting. So do let me know in the comments what you're going to use this, uh, 
this painting for if anything it's given you a few hints and let me know as well if you'd like any more simpler craft tutorials like this I tend to do more of the fine art stuff so I'm going to go on now and add more dark greens to my painting so do remember to have a look in the description of this video not only is there all sorts of helpful information and some free downloadable pdfs but you can also find details of the paint set that I've used today. That's the floral set designed by me and manufactured in England by Jackman's Art Materials with handmade watercolours. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to really like my video on realistic flower painting techniques. You can watch that video right now.